everyone. So today I'm going to do mixed medium morsel number 13, I believe is the right number. I hope that's right. <laughs> um, and what we're going to do today is the painted circles technique. Um, I have a video already on this technique that I did a couple of years ago. Well, not quite a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half. <clears throat> And uh, I'm going to put a link, I'll put a little iCard right up here in the corner so you can go and check out that video too if you want uh, to see how I did that one. Because I'm going to do this one just a little bit differently and by that I just mean I'm going to use different colors. The uh, first time I used a music sheet and I used multiple different colors and it turned out beautiful. I loved the way it looked. And uh, today I'm just going to use some more... Um, cool colors and um, they're just some of my favorites. I decided I'd do it a little differently and of course it's going to be different because it will be smaller, much smaller. <laughs> These are going to be tiny circles. So I'm not using as many colors and I'm going to use a dictionary page and this one just happens to have the word circle on it. So I actually had that page available in my little dictionary so that worked out well. I'm still going to use um, the cotton swabs or q-tips to apply the paint because I think that's just a really good way to control it and I'll use those few colors I've got these five colors out <clears throat> let me get these bottles turned around so you can see whoops didn't mean to do that okay there we go I'm gonna use these five and just see how it looks um, and also some black and some white. So first I'm going to just go ahead and put out a little bit of paint. Um, I'm just using a piece of deli paper here to, uh, as a palette. This is just a really simple process. You're just going to make a few circles, as many as you want. I'm going to be making a background for my little page in my Mixed Media Morsels book. And uh, so I'm going to just make small circles on the page and I'm going to use this page. I'm going to glue it to this one when I'm done. You can make a background if you want on your page on your page, whatever you're using. You can make a background and cut the circles out that you make and glue them on to your background. You can do whatever you'd like, but I'm just gonna put paint them directly onto this page and then glue this page to this little one. All right, so I'm gonna just start with this purple and you just, um, you just make a little, you know, you're just making little circular marks, just like that. Just little marks and this is so easy and I don't want anybody stressing out over this because this is one of the more simpler things we could e ever do because there's no nothing really special like as far as skill <laughs> you don't have to have any special skills to do this you just do it and it's just a lot of fun and You can do it in any way that you want. You don't have to do it with the same colors I have. You don't have to do, you know, anything. There's nothing special in that way about it. <clears throat> so then you're just going to continue your little circular, circular marks. I'm just picking up a different <clears throat> different little Q-tip, a new one for each color, so we don't have any, you know, messes happening. <laughs> I think I'm going to put a little green in the middle of some of these. This little bright green. I may not do them all the same. I may just continue around the uh, circle. And it's okay if some of these colors sort of blend together 
It's not a big deal. Okay. We'll go with this lighter one. Get enough on there. There we go. Okay, let's see now. Got, um, I've used all the colors. Oops, I put that. No, I have to use the green. There we go. You see, this green. All right. This is just, you know, it's really kind of a messy little project, but it, turns out to be so gorgeous and so much fun. And by messy, I mean it's just imperfect in, in the way that it's done. Okay, I think I'm gonna add um, another little bit of blue. Let's see, I think I'll put some of this light blue in here. There we go. And just add a little bit more of this here and there. And okay. Didn't really want to put it there because that blue is there, so I'm going to use the purple there. And I'm going to go back to the lime green and add a little tiny bit of that in here. Maybe a bit more on the outside. You can see how your circle will eventually will round out and not look odd. The more you add, the more you can kind of round it out. This one's pretty round already. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Okay. All right, oops, I want to fix this little bit of purple area where it got kind of thin. And over here too. All right. Okay, so that's how those look so far. Okay, you can see that. Not perfect in any way, just mush together colors. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of white. And I'm gonna just touch up just a tiny bit to add some highlights. Don't need a lot of this, just a little. And I usually just take one little swipe around. You know what? I'm going to dry this first. 
don't want to smear my colors. And you can see how this um, this looks a little dark right now, and this white will really, you know, pop it out and make it look brighter and more alive. So you're just going to take a little white and just make little marks, like little, <clears throat> just a little curved mark like that. And do that to each one. enough on there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and I'm going to put uh, one more dot of white kind of opposite where the first mark went. Just a little dot. Okay. There we go. You know what I didn't think about was I put these circles on the entire page. I don't know how that's going to work out when I have to cut it down. <laughs> let's see. Well, let's see. We're going to... We'll get four of them on there. Or I can slide it down, maybe get half top one and half of the bottom one here. Yeah, I might do that. All right, it'll still work. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take some black, and I'm just going to put my paint, I'm just going to put it here for ease of use. <laughs> Alright, now what you need to do next is find a circle, uh, something to make a circle mark with. I've got several little, little caps and things that will make circles, and you want to put it over your circle and see if it covers around the entire circle. This one's a little bit small. It almost works. It's almost exact. But I've got one that's just a little bit bigger than this little water bottle cap. Yeah, that will that will completely go around each one. All right, so you're going to uh, drag your, um, your finger. <laughs> you're going to drag your finger through the paint. Oh, that's great. Okay, you're going to drag your cap or whatever you're using to make a circle with uh, around in the paint until you get the entire surface of it, you know, painted. And then come to your circles and stamp the black around it. Okay, and stamp. Okay, and then you're going to go back and do a second one and offset it just a little bit. Like that. Doesn't that look cool? Get a little bit of paint on that one. Let's try that again. A little bit better. That's what it looks like. Isn't that neat? I just love this little technique. It's just so fun. And you can always do it and use different colors, and it will look completely different from 
the last time you did it. And I just love that aspect of it. It's really, really cool. All right. So we got that dried out. Now um, I'm going to attach this to my page and um, I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come right back as soon as that's done and we'll continue. Be right back. Okay, so I'm just trimming out my page, getting the extra off the sides, off the edges. Okay. So that's what it looks like after it's trimmed out. And then there's a couple of little pieces left here that has some paint on it. I'll use those and put them in my scrap bin and use them on something else. Okay. So that's how my page looks so far. And, you know, I may add some words to this, but I don't have any of that um, together right now. So what I'll do is... If I decide I'm going to add some words or anything else to this page, I'll go ahead and do it, but I'll show it to you in the next time when we come back. In fact, I need to show you my last morsel, uh, the torn paper strips. This is how mine um, finished up. So I like that a lot. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Okay, so, oh, this is kind of cool. My, my colors actually kind of match that next to it. <laughs> I didn't plan that at all. But you can see that I like these colors. <laughs> I said that earlier. So, um, so that's how that's going to look. But I'm going to put a little Mod Podge on the top and seal it down. Now, the last time I made these, and if you watch my other video, you'll see that. I uh, splattered some some black splatters on on my page. Once I got to this stage, I went ahead and did some splatters, but I'm not going to do that this time, uh, just because I want to, you know, have it a little bit different, and I don't know exactly how I want to finish this page yet. So because of that, I'm going to leave it off this time and just go ahead and put the Mod Podge on. And I'll just have basically a background finished. And then, you know, I may or may not add something to it later. We'll see how it goes. Sometimes I see something and go, oh, that would look great on that page, you know. And sometimes if I don't have a plan, I'd rather wait for one of those spontaneous moments when I see something and realize that would be perfect on a page, you know. So you don't have to ever start a an art journal page and finish it completely. You can always work on it a little and put it away and work on something else and come back to it later as you find things or as you purchase things that you want, you know, to go with it or to go on it. So, all right. Now we got a good coverage of the Mod Podge on there. And that's going to really make it look nice. I love how Mod Podge changes things. Um, I don't know. It just gives it a nice at first, it enhances the colors to me, and um, this was an older dictionary page, and so it just, you know, felt a little um, dry and and chalky, sort of a not chalky really, but it had had that feeling because it was dry, and so with this coat of the Mod Podge on there, it's gonna really make it nice. That is so cool. Yep, it looks great. Okay, so you can see how something that was really imperfectly done, you can see how messy these circles of paint are. But look how cool it looks in the finished piece, you know? It just looks really cool and artsy. And so that just shows you, you don't have to feel any stress about having things perfect all the time and just be loose and free and fun with it. And you might surprise yourself at how cool, you know, it can turn out. Like these black circles, are they're not perfectly placed, you know. They're messy and they look great. 
So, so have fun and be loose and free with your art and see if it doesn't change your perspective just a little bit on uh, how things can look in the end. All right, guys. Well, that was fun, and I hope you enjoy making your painted circles. I'll be looking for your uh, posts in the Facebook group. Uh, any of you who don't know about it yet, there is a Facebook group called Mixed Media Morsels, and I do put the link to that group in the description of each one of these videos, so feel free to come over and uh, join with us there. If you're on Facebook, we'd love to have you, and we'll see you again on the next video, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.